Hi, my name is Nick Cosgrove. Welcome to Let's Talk. And I'm here today with holistic nutritionist Stephanie Talbot. Steph, welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited to have you on because even though we only have half an hour, I feel like there's so much that you and I could talk about. So we might have to have to do a two-part series on this. But before we start, why don't we tell everyone who you are and what you do for a living? Sure. Um, so my name is Stephanie Talbot, and I'm a registered holistic nutritionist. Um, I've been practicing nutrition for about five years now, and I can honestly say it's my absolute passion. I have found my calling. So I know a lot of people um, don't get the, um, they don't end up finding what sparks them. And this is definitely what sparks me for sure. And um, just being able to put forth and make a difference in people's life just through food um, has just made a massive difference in, in me and how I feel and how I serve my clients. And um, yeah, I just absolutely love it. So what made you decide to get into working in nutrition? Um, I actually, to be honest, kind of stumbled over it. So five years, six, six years ago, um, I was working, or maybe seven actually, um, I was working at a old folks home. And so I was doing um, the staffing there. And so I was up at four in the morning every day and it was a very intense, stressful job. And, um, I would go home and I would sometimes like cry at the end of my shift. Like it was just the amount of stress that you're, is put on the people. There is a lot. And I knew I ended up getting pregnant um, with my son Landon. And when I went off on that leave, I went off early, like on stress leave early because it was too much for me to handle. And I just right. didn't want to risk my pregnancy. And, um, I knew that I did not want to go back to that job. And so I felt like it was an opportunity for me to sort of explore my options. And I actually considered personal training at one point, but um, it wasn't, um, I always had a passion for health and fitness, but I wasn't sure which direction I really wanted to go. So I just started searching things online and my aunt um, had done nutrition before. So I looked up a couple of things and I looked at what a dietitian was. And then this holistic nutrition program popped up. And I started reading everything and everything just completely resonated with me. And the class started a week later and I just did it. Like I didn't even think twice. I just signed up. This is what I was going to do. My son was six months old at the time when the class started. And so that was obviously going to be a challenge trying to go to school with a young child, but yeah, I, I knew I had to do it. I know. <laughs> yeah. And I just had the motivation not to go back to that job. And I just went into it. And honestly, every single day that I was in class, my jaw was on the floor. I was absorbing and learning so much stuff. Um, we are fed a lot of mistruths out there. And I was just shocked to hear how things actually are and what things are actually do for your body and all the advertising and everything that's out there and how it's meant to persuade a certain way, which isn't actually necessarily healthy for you. So anyways, I just, I loved every minute of it and just started as, as soon as I was out, I hit the ground running basically. Well, I need to ask you this, and I'm sure it's a question you get a lot, but what's the difference between a holistic nutritionist and a regular nutritionist? Um, okay, so those two, a nutritionist is, doesn't really have to have any um, background. They don't have to necessarily go to school for anything to be able to call themselves a nutritionist. So you have to really be careful of who you choose to do work with. Okay. Um, so honestly, almost everyone can call them, themselves a nutritionist. If they have any knowledge of nutrition or have learned it through like as a side part of their program or whatever that they went to school for. Um, but it doesn't mean they have full knowledge in that area, but they do know some things. Um, those people can call themselves nutritionists. Um, but when you get into the designation part of things, the one that I get questioned about a lot is a dietitian. So what's the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist? Okay. And there's quite a big difference. Um, the dietitians, and I have to be very careful of my wording because they, um, I can get in trouble and actually lose my license if I refer to things that they don't want us to refer ourselves oh, to. Okay. So even the word nutritionist itself is governed by dietitians. So that's why we're wow. designated as registered holistic nutritionists. So, oh. um, basically their government, um, their governed and we aren't. So they are covered by um, government expenses. So you can um, write it off as extended medical for dietitians. Um, they mainly work in hospitals. We're not allowed to work in hospitals. Um, and they follow mainly the Canada Food Guide. Mm. And um, they basically focus on 
what is the way to say this? So they focus on like the amount, the proper amount of calories that somebody should have, uh, not necessarily looking at where those calories are coming from, um, but they're following a certain um, protocol outlined by the government, basically. Sure. And so um, registered holistic nutritionists, we um, look at everything as a whole. So not only do we pay attention to nutrition, we focus on your lifestyle, um, supplements, and your mental and emotional well-being, well-being as well, because it is all intertwined. Right. So if you're eating really well and you're working out all the time and you're feeling exhausted or you're not getting the weight loss that you want, or there's other things going on, like you have to pay attention to everyone's surroundings, not just those two main things. So we kind of are all encompassing. Um, we take an all encompassing approach to that. And um, basically we focus on where those calories are coming from because they absolutely do matter. 100%. And we focus on like the soil, like what kind of food is your, what kind of produce is being grown? Like what kind of soil is it? Because that also matters. How many nutrients are in those things? Because um, yeah, anyways, a calorie is a calorie. We look at everything, like the whole approach to stuff, not just uh, um, a small amount of things. So Right. It, it sounds as if you guys look at more of the quality of the, the nutrients that are going into the foods. Not just yeah. the macronutrients, but also the micronutrients. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the Canada Health Food Guideline, and I think recently in the last year they updated that Canada Health Food Guide. What's yeah. your opinion? I'm just curious. What's your opinion on that Canada Health Food Guideline right now? Um, I actually think they did a lot of positive changes. Like the okay. other ones were just, um, I did not agree with them at all. It was very heavily meat and dairy focused, and this one they've kind of taken it back quite a bit. I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't even think they have any dairy in there at all as part of the recommendations. Um, so that's come quite a ways. Um, I do believe there is still some adjustments that need to be made on there, but they've almost like flipped it in a sense where they're focusing more on the fruits and the veggies and like grains are way f further down and they're not foc focusing on much um, as much on the meat and stuff like that. So I do think there's improvements that still need to be made, but it, they've come like huge jumps from what it was before. So what it was before, I would never recommend for no, anybody. So. No. So you, you think they're headed in the right direction, but there's still room for improvement right now. Yeah. Um, what type of clients do you work with primarily? Um, so I originally started off with weight loss clients. So of course you think of nutrition and people gravitate towards you that need to lose weight or want to lose weight. Um, so that is what I originally specialized in, but I realized that my true passion where I want to put most of my energy in is dealing with women who have hormonal imbalances. So Interesting. I myself uh, suffered from endometriosis years ago, and that is a very excruciating. So the women who have been to that know what I went through, but it's a very excruciating um, disease that you have. So it's basically where the outside of your uh, like your uterine lining grows on the outside rather than the inside and it's very painful every time you ovulate I ended up in the hospital every single month oh, wow. um, due to the pain um, I ended up being delusional I was vomiting all the time um, I couldn't move my stomach bloated out like I was six months pregnant like it was honestly it's not just how some people think oh you're just getting like oh you just have bad PMS it's nothing no it's, right. it's a very painful thing and uh, I had been from doctor to doctor to doctor and was just told to try this birth control, try this birth control, or oh, you tried that one, try this one now. And I was just, I, nobody was really focusing on what was going, what was actually going on there, trying to band-aid the situation. And okay. that's like another thing that I think is important to focus on that holistic nutritionists do is that we don't try to band-aid anything because a lot of people just try and, oh, you have heartburn? Okay, here, take this um, antacid. And you're not fit. It's, you have heartburn for a reason. So our job is to figure out where it comes from okay. and then help you um, get through that. I so, like that. Yeah. yeah, I just, I think it completely makes sense. And it's made, that's to me, what's made the biggest difference with my clients is focusing on where it's coming from. Okay. Um, but with my endometriosis, I kept trying to band aid everything. And I finally went into my gynecologist and I went in there angry because I was just like, I was done with everything. And I, I was like, okay, look, like you are, the only way to test for endometriosis is to give you a laparoscopy. And the only way they'll give you an laparoscopy is to know if you have endometriosis. So it's kind of a catch 22. Sure. It's like you, so I went in there and I demanded one. I said, I'm not leaving this office until you give me a laparoscopy. And you. he did. Yeah. And I had it. And um, they did the surgery and everything like that. But at that point, I wasn't aware of 
how my eating and my mental state and my stress and everything was contributing to it. And that's how it was growing in the first place. And so um, when I had my first surgery, I continued my life as it was and I ended up getting it back. And so when I got it back the second time, that's when I was just finishing my nutrition school and I started to implement some of the stuff that I learned and I have had no problem since then. I've been able to control it and um, minimize the pain drastically. Like I don't have any problems anymore. So um, yeah. And you've done this all through just nutrition. You're not taking yep. any drugs. You're not taking any prescription based medications. It's all through nutrition. Yeah, nutrition and some natural supplements um, doesn't apply to everybody, but sometimes it is beneficial for you depending on what your um, what your situation is. So again, it's person by person basis. It's not a blanket. Everyone should do this one thing. Um, it is focused on person to person. So, um, but yeah, it is just through food and some supplements, and then obviously lifestyle changes because stress is a huge ag aggravator, and I believe. Um, people, it puts a roadblock in a lot of people's way of where they want to get to when there's a lot of stress involved. You mentioned supplements. Um, with natural supplements, for example, what are, what are your thoughts on things like probiotics, uh, digestive enzymes? What, what's your viewpoint on that? Uh, yeah, 100%. Um, we are constantly doing things to um, damage our bodies. Just enough being said about that. Um, our gut health is probably the most important important thing that people need to focus on because if your gut health is not functioning properly your mental health is going to suffer um, that is the root to all diseases is what they say um, in in all the books and stuff that I've, I've learned for nutrition your gut is the root to everything and so more uh, neurotransmitters are actually produced in your gut than it is in your brain so if you have are suffering with digestive issues you are more likely to have anxiety and depression for example wow. um, if you suffer from yeah you're not absorbing your nutrients properly which that obviously affects stuff um, and just yeah we're constantly doing things to lower our good gut bacteria which is something that's very important so i believe most people should be supplementing with probiotics okay. um, to be able to help balance that out right. and obviously other like improving gut protocols actually sorry i have to change my wording of what oh. i wanted to say because i don't I understand. Think I understand what you're trying to say i get what you're saying yeah yeah um yeah and digestive enzymes for sure um not everybody necessarily, but if you do suffer from gas and bloating, um, that's a good indication or even indigestion. A lot of people think that that's too much acid in your stomach and 90% of the time it actually means that there's too little and your food is actually fermenting in your stomach and that's what gives the feeling of the acid reflux. And so digestive enzymes are a great way to help um, stimulate your body to produce its own digestive enzymes again, like more, but also you're going to help to break down and absorb that food better too. That's interesting. I, see, and I didn't know that. Um, so when it comes to supplementation as a whole, I mean, you're a holistic nutritionist. Do you, when someone comes to work with you, do you have a certain supplement brand that you like to recommend or do you yourself sell a certain supplement brand? Um, I do. Yeah. Okay. I work with doTERRA actually. So for okay. some supplements, I go through that. Um, I'm obviously promoting um, a healthy natural lifestyle. And so sure. through the essential oils, I'm able to help people to use those to combat um, like the gas and the bloating and all of that naturally without re reaching for the Tylenol, Advil, antacids, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's very powerful plant medicine and um, it's been very successful with what I've been using. So there are some supplements I will recommend through that. So um, like your multivitamin, your um, omega-3s, and we have a um, cellular repair antioxidant um, blend as well. So those are three. There's also a um, digestive enzymes and probiotics with them too. So they're all whole food source, which is really important when it comes to supplements. Um, a lot of supplements will choose the synthetic route and our body cannot absorb anything synthetic at all. It actually can cause more damage and confusion within our bodies. So you want to make sure whatever supplement you're choosing that it is whole food sourced and there's no additives, no fillers, no anything in there. And these guys have researched before I decided to do business with them and they checked up all my boxes. Um, there's obviously other great brands out there as well. And if the, whatever they don't supply, I will recommend an alternative um, to them just to get through from the health Perfect. food store. Perfect. Yeah. So would you say that you work primarily with women or do you also work with men as well? It's primarily women. Um, I do have some men that will come to me, um, but it's obviously not hormonally related, but it's like gut issues. I have a couple of men that have come to me that have had really bad um, gut problems. So like had trouble, like they'd eat food and they would get 
bad pains or like gas and bloating after certain things. Um, or they just want to fuel their body properly for their workouts or they have zero energy. So it's a little bit different realm when it comes to men, but yes, I do help. Uh, it's more far and few between it's mainly women, but yes, I do have men. Okay. So I have a question for you. I, I work with a lot of pre and post menopausal women and one of the main questions they ask me and I, I mean, I can't give them this advice and maybe you can. What, what are your viewpoints? What are your viewpoints on HRT therapy? Sorry, what was it? What are your viewpoints on HRT therapy? Hormone replacement. Um, I, it's kind of a tough one. Um, I believe in some situations it will be good and some not so good. So it depends on what the hormone is, first of all. Right. Um, but for women specifically that are going through um, menopause, like it's your estrogen that takes a drastic drop and that is what causes all the hot flashes and the inability to lose weight as easy and um, the irritability and all that kind of stuff. It's the drastic drop. And so there are certain supplements that you can introduce into your diet without it actually being hormone replacement therapy to help to build up that estrogen or that difference so that you're, it's still gradually going down, but just there's not that sharp decrease. So it's going to help to um, alleviate a lot of those symptoms or including things like um, flax. And uh, that is hugely important for people going through menopause too, because it has those same, um, those same benefits. It's helped to balance those hormones naturally rather than um, adding that in. So it would definitely have to be a case by case basis for me right. to like, again, it's not a general thing. I'd have to sure. look person by person. Right. I understand. And that actually brings me to my next question. When you have a new client sign up to work with you, I mean, obviously you don't have to give all the specifics as to how you go about designing a nutritional plan, but what do you look for uh, in cases like say someone has IBS, Crohn's, colitis, what would you do as a starting base? Like if you give me just, a, just like some, a basic plan, what would you do to start? Um, so I get everybody to fill out my intake form. And so it's very, it takes about half an hour <laughs> to fill it out. Yeah. It's quite in depth. And I feel that's super important because I, it's really important for people to be super candid with me because there is absolutely no judgment on my end whatsoever. I find some people like to hide what they're actually eating or not be fully um, honest about that, but it doesn't really help me and it doesn't help them. So full honesty is super important. Um, but it's very in depth and there is a, um, a questionnaire on there and it's basically a symptoms checklist and so you fill out your symptoms based on a scale of one to three where you are fitting in that and so I cover all the different systems of the body oh, and so okay. when people fill that out at the end of it it gives me the results and I can kind of calculate and see which area of the body is most out of balance and if someone has um, Crohn's or colitis or anything like that obviously digestive intestinal is going to come up as number one um, but it'll show me um, digestive intestinal, hormonal, immune system, um, like your liver, blood sugar, all that kind of stuff, because all of those things when they aren't functioning properly will give you symptoms. So this is where I was talking about before is like the symptoms, you don't want to band-aid them, you want to figure out where it's actually coming from. Right. So based on that, I will put together a plan uh, for diet, lifestyle, and if they need supplements as well, um, and just kind of go from there. And so obviously it's major gut work like obviously you can't heal Crohn's but you can do a lot of stuff to help take away a lot of their symptoms and help to improve because with them it's really hard for them to even absorb a lot of nutrients right so right. because they have damages like their their intestinal wall has been damaged so there's a lot of ways that you can help them to absorb their nutrients and yes again not heal their situation but like make it better right you know I Everything you're saying really resonates with me because I, I really like everything that you're talking about because you're looking more at not just macronutrients and calories. You're looking at the quality of the nutrients. You're looking at the micronutrients. Um, earlier this morning, I was actually cruising your Instagram page and I'm looking at all this food that you make. And yeah. <laughs> it looks absolutely amazing. The one common theme I see is you don't really use a lot of processed no sugar or anything in these foods. No. So give me a little bit with, the, with regards to what you do with your own diet. Um, okay. This is... Honestly, <laughs> my secret little nerdy thing is like, I love taking something unhealthy and making a healthier version of it. Okay. I just feed off it. I'm like, just tell me like, name one thing and like, I'll, I'll find a healthier. I see old. your page. Yeah. It's impressive. <laughs> um, so example, like muffins or like a lasagna or shepherd's pie. That's a huge one. I know a lot of guys love that. And that, for example, I will use turkey, uh, ground turkey instead of um, any other meats. 
Okay. And for the top, I will blend um, either yams, maybe a potato, but mainly cauliflower and blend it up so that it's healthier. You're not getting as much of the starchy um, carbs. And sure. it's just, there's little things like that, little things in all my recipes that I will make a slight adjustment to. Right. And so I will take a normal recipe and then I'll just switch it out for like uh, coconut sugar or stevia or something like that, where it calls for something unhealthy and I'll, I'll switch it to make it healthy. So yeah, um, myself, I basically, anybody who has hormonal issues, you should be eating within the first hour of waking up. So intermittent fasting is great for some people, major hormonal imbalances and you're super stressed, whatever person, no, not for you. And so that's me. I always have a lot of go on the go. Um, I'm not crazy stressed, but I do have a lot going on. So I need to eat breakfast within the first hour of waking up. Okay. Um, if I want to do cardio beforehand, before that hour, or before what it, just to do that, I will work out for like 20 minutes um, cardio, and then I'll have my breakfast. And then um, I eat about five meals per day. I don't really keep track. I basically listen to my body and um, how I'm feeling. And then I will, I need to make sure that I have things kind of half prepped in the fridge. Otherwise, I'm just like anybody else and I will choose the easiest thing. So um, it's not rocket science. I'm not special or different than anybody else. I still have the same um, little things that will either make me fall off off track or keep on track. Um, I don't believe that there's really um, a right or a wrong way to go about it. I believe that if you're consistent, you'll eventually reach your goals and, and really learning how to be in tune with your body and what your body is feeling because Um, sometimes you'll be eating food and you'll feel kind of sick or maybe really tired afterwards, but you're not, and recognizing that in your head and paying attention to what your body's trying to tell you, your body's trying to tell you stuff all the time. And it's just a matter of listening to what's going on. Listening to your body. Yeah. In your opinion, why do you think there are so much, so many misconceptions when it comes to dietary nutrition? Um, I believe (laughs) first of all, what works for one person and then they, talk their face off about it, everyone's going to get hyped up about it. And it doesn't mean it's going to work for the next person. So again, everybody is different. Um, I find people are always looking for the next biggest, better thing. Sure. And their people are so passionate for some reason about cutting out certain food groups. And <laughs> first it was fat and it was carbohydrates and yeah. you know, per, maybe it's going to be protein next year. Who knows? But it's um, a cycle that constantly <laughs> regurgitates itself over and over again. Yes. It's ridiculous because it actually has such negative effects. Like if we're looking at where um, obes- obesity and stuff is and diabetes and all that, um, it's gone up so much in the last couple of years because it's all these people who were fat is bad, fat is horrible. You can't have it. And then what they do is when you take fat out of a food, they add sugar. So <laughs> people ended up with all these like extra, you need to have all carbo- all um, food groups in your diet um, in most of your meals, right? Yeah. So I just feel like it's, uh, there's a lot of people, again, it's these people that are nutritionists, right? So sure. something works for them. They have a lot of knowledge behind something and maybe it, it just, it worked for them and they want to tell everybody about it. And then that this is the new fad where it doesn't mean it's necessarily um, right or healthy, Um, or going to work for you. And I think that's where the misinformation comes from. And I also think that nutrition is ever evolving. There's going to be new studies and new things that come out just as anything else. And I think that um, people just need to focus on works for them and not trying to follow a certain trend or a certain diet or a certain anything, because you just need to find what works for you. And if you don't know what works for you, that's where professionals like, like you and me come in and help people figure out what works best for them. Right. Well, what I like with everything you're saying is that you really take a customized approach to every person you work with. It's not a copy and paste diet plan. Here you go. Off you go. And I mean, how many people, both nutritionists and trainers, I've seen this for years. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you have too. Well, even in your business too, I'm sure you see the same thing. I see that with training programs. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to talk about COVID-19 for a second with you. Sure. It's affected everyone, obviously, on some type of scale. But I'd like to know first, how it's affected you on a business scale and then on a personal scale? Um, well, to be honest, the clinic I was working out of is closed. So oh, okay. um, it has affected me that way. Um, I have always done a little bit online, though. So I'm kind of used to that. But I have always worked out of a clinic. So yeah. that part obviously puts a damper on things. I'm not able to see people in person where that is a huge thing for me. I love human interaction. And so not having that 
um, is, is difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, but being able to do this, for example, still creates that connection with people, even though you're not physically in the same space. So, um, yeah, it's, it's made my, it's brought my income down. Um, quite a bit not having that. Um, I'm just going to be super straight up with you. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm trying to move stuff online. So right. the kind of the silver lining is I have been asking for extra time to be able to move more of my business online. Sure. So I've kind of been granted that and yeah. um, I'm trying to navigate that and move more of my stuff online. So I'm able to just do that and run my programs and um, run different stuff that way. And I can still do one on ones like this. Um, so that's kind of what my goal is right now to try and move everything over. And then whenever we get back up and running, I'll still do in person, of course. Um, but a majority of it will actually be online. I think I'm going to be switching it fully over, but, um, so that's sort of on the business side. Personally, I'm taking it day by day. Yeah. <laughs> so I have an eight year old and, yeah. um, him not being in school and not having any free time at all. It's not like he has naps or anything anymore. No, no, I guess it's, not. Um, it's, I, I'm trying to find the mental space to just divide things up and sort of create a routine. So I find that like children thrive with routine. Yeah. I thrive with routine. So I've actually created a little sort of schedule. So Monday to Friday, we're kind of following it and it seems to be working really well. And so I'm able to have my business time. He's able to have one-on-one -on -one time with me and um, just kind of, kind of do that. But I, I honestly feel like, yes, there's a lot of, you can look at it being in a super scary and tragic way. Obviously there is certain tragedies that are happening. It's awful. But, um, I think it's really important that we don't spend all of our time watching the news and getting absorbed and going down that dark tunnel because it can lead to uh, serious mental things going on for you. And I think it's really important that to focus on the positive things. Like I, part of hormonal imbalance is stress. And like I, I mentioned this earlier that um, stress is a huge thing and I'm constantly dealing with women. Women are always go, go, go. Like one thing after another, like we just never stop and we're right. always multitasking and we're always doing everything. Yeah. And that creates burnout within the, your body. And that's when your hormones will completely go off balance and you're gonna gain weight, you're gonna be stressed, whatever else. So this is almost a blessing in disguise because now us women who are used to doing that, we're forced to slow down. Right. We're forced to take a look at ourselves. We're forced to do self-care. We're not forced to, but it's a really great opportunity, great opportunity. to do it. Yes. And you need to honestly spend that time doing that and read that book, that self-help book that you've been wanting to read for a long time. Start to look into a course that you've been wanting to do. Like there's an opportunity at our hands here. We can look at it being like, okay, we're either um, getting cabin fever and like everything is awful or we can be like, you know what? we're lucky to be stuck at home right now and I can focus on all these other things that I've always been putting off. I can slow down and really take a step back and um, get to know your kids more. Like even just that in right. itself is a huge yeah. thing. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I agree with you. I think it's a great time to reinvent yourself both on a personal scale and on a business scale. Yeah. Um, if someone wanted to get in contact with you for nutritional consulting, how would they do that? Um, so the best place I would say is my, um, through Facebook, um, everything is under circle of life nutrition. That's my business name. Okay. So, um, my nutrition page is circle of life nutrition on Facebook. Uh, same as Instagram. Um, I do have a website as well, circle of life nutrition.ca. I'm in the process of switching that over to something else though, but there is tons of recipes on there still right now. Just keep in mind the information is a little bit outdated right now. I haven't updated it in a while, but, um, yeah, the other ones are more up to date and you can contact me through either of those. Well, you're taking this time to reinvent your business. So That's right. <laughs> you're moving everything online. I'll put a link in the description to the, all of your contact information below in this video. Okay. Uh, Steph, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, yeah, there's so much so more much. I want to talk to you about. And I well, would, we can do it again. <laughs> yeah, I would like to do it again because I'd like to pick your brain on a lot of things. Uh, you're sure. super, super knowledgeable, especially when it comes to holistic nutrition and just, just talking to you. It's, it's so nice to talk to somebody who takes a more customized approach with their clients. I am so sick of seeing these copy and paste plans out there online. So yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> I Me bet too. you are. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on, Steph. And, uh, yeah, of uh, course. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Yeah, thanks. You too. And to hopefully you. we won't be in uh, lockdown for much longer. Oh, my God. I hope not. No. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit. Give me like another like couple of weeks and then we can go back to normal. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thanks so much, Steph. Okay. We'll talk Have to you later. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.